All right, welcome ladies and gents. Let's talk Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. I'm going to quickly, just briefly, to start this review, go through my live tweeting. It's not, it's not, it's not that much. It's not that much. I, you'll be all right. You'll pay attention. Okay, it's not that long. Um, but I think it's it's enlightening. And follow me over on uh, Twitter as well at Mister H Reviews. Sat down to watch Rebel Moon. Please do a wellness check in an hour. I may have killed myself. Did they really just recap the last film? We watched that. What the fuck? My god, a banquet, randomly ready for everyone. Now everyone can suddenly farm, for no reason. Oh, and everything is in slow-mo, good times. Oh, now they're all being given a blanket after a hard day's farming. Righto. Pointless slowdown as well to ruin the pace in terms of narrative. They knocked up those intricately woven blankets pretty quickly after one day. What the fuck? Put that skill and technology into a better farm. Uh, oh, the robot is uh, now some creep from a distance watching everyone. Dressed like some hippie Viking crossbreed. What the fuck am I watching? Hmm. More artificial lens flares. Oh, wow. We're having the backstories again. Fantastic. We literally had all the backstories in the first movie, and they recapped the first movie. Why the hell are they doing this? Jesus. This is so chaotic and poorly directed. Well, apparently they now don't care about the grain, so if that's the case, why not just blow it all up from orbit? The film has now forgotten the previous scenes. Ugh. Oh, nice. Point blank range bazooka shot. Smart. Oh, I like how the soldiers can't see people literally right in front of them now. What the fuck? Oh, hippie viking droid turns up just in time. Oh, now they're blowing the village up anyway. All of this could have been one movie, my god. And just by coincidence, the bombs go off just before the guns go off. Bravo, Snyder. Such writing, such wow. Goodness me, what drivel. Oh, thank God, it's almost over. What a bunch of blithering shite. That that genuinely sums up the movie. So I want to go through that, actually, step by step, because these were my key points. Uh, they they did literally open the movie recapping the previous movie. There's, there's no need to do that. There's no need to do that. At all. We watched it. And, like, it's not... You know, it, it's not a long time, you know, that they're spending recapping, but it is insulting your audience, massively so. You know, you, your audience might be stupid, I guess, or maybe they do know the target audience. I don't know. Anyway, oh, they suddenly arrive at the village, all of these merry band of warriors, uh, and there is a, ba uh, a banquet, like a feast, just waiting for them randomly. It's like, how did they know they were coming? Okay, then. Um, and then... We enter into a whole scene where everyone starts farming the next day because they realise that the Imperium, yes, because they stole that from Warhammer, the Dreadnought is going to be there in five days. So they're like, shit, we need to get all the grain because that's our weapon and bargaining tool. Okay, then. So they start farming and suddenly everyone's dressed like a farmer and suddenly everyone can farm. And it's all in incredible slow-mo. Cool. Cool. If you cut out all of the slow motion scenes in this film, it would be easily 25% quicker. Um, then randomly, after that hard day's farming, they're all randomly around at an, an, another, another slowdown. There is so many slowdowns. They're at another slowdown part. And they're all being given blankets like tapestries. Why? How? How did you knock these up so quickly? What are you doing? I don't get it. Super odd. But it was it was just a genuine pointless slowdown, right? That slowed everything down like a good 10 minutes. I don't get it. And then all whilst this is happening, that robot, Jimmy or whatever its name is, who bloody cares, is just staring at everyone from a distance, scanning people. It was very odd. And again, a whole abundance of artificial lens flare thrown in. 
We rag on JJ Abrams for his lens flare. My god, this was bad. Uh, and then, because they're preparing for battle again, they start telling each other's backstories again. Even though we'd already had that in the first movie. Everyone was introduced with their backstories. We, it, we, it was so bizarre. Just kept telling us stuff that we'd already known. It would have been covered. Uh, and then they start digging loads of... They, they get all the farmers to start digging loads of like trenches and stuff under the ground, right? And, and the Dreadnought comes over and scans everyone. And goes, oh, heat signatures. There's people in there. Doesn't... Doesn't notice the people in the ground? Doesn't notice the tunnels in the ground? What the fuck? What are you doing? Logical inconsistencies within your own universe. Um, and then, yeah, because they're all having this massive long fight. They, uh, they apparently did care about the grain, but now they don't care about the grain. Because the grain's definitely getting shot in this fight. It, it was very strange. Uh, and when you're underneath in the tunnels, even though even though you're in a tunnel, there is literally sunlight coming through the the roof. I don't understand how. Lots of things I did not understand about this movie. And then, randomly, at one point, there are people literally in front of the soldiers, and the soldiers don't see them. They just they just sat there in front of them. And the soldiers just keep walking up towards him. And they're like, ha, surprise. It's like, that would work if you were actually hidden. You're not. It was very strange. Very strange. I know I'm just pointing out all the terrible stuff. Because there wasn't anything that good. There was some slight praises in a minute. But I want to get through all of this. Uh, and then Viking boy turns up. A Viking hippie droid thing turns up again. Does a relatively cool sequence. Like, there you go. There's a good thing. Conveniently, right in the nick of time. And then, Cora makes her way onto the Dreadnought, plants bombs. It blows up just at the right time where the cannon was about to fire on the entire village, rendering the entire film completely useless. Uh, but it didn't save the day, so MacGuffin, like coincidence. I hate this film, my god. It je this whole thing, right, part one and part two, genuinely could have been one film. The amount of time they spent recapping stuff, it could have just been one film, right? You didn't. We had that in the first film. You didn't need shows again. There's so much pointless crap. It's terribly written, and people are like, "Yo, oh, but it's better than Hollywood stuff." It's not better than Hollywood stuff. Go watch Late Night with the Devil. That's an amazing film. That's great. Even Abigail's better than this. Even Abigail's better than this. Oh my god. This is this is poo. I don't understand how Zack Snyder managed to convince Netflix to give him all the money for this. Holy shit. And he's like, I've got six more, mate. No, please. No, stop. No one wants this. This is actual crap. It's funny, though, because he's like, oh, this is my... This is going to be my Star Wars. It's like, yeah, because they're shit as well. It would have fit right in. I, none of it makes it, it. It's all shit. Looks pretty, shot well in certain bits, and I'm convinced Snyder must be gay as well because the amount of shirtless men greased up. It's a little bit disconcerting, and I bet you anything he was like, "Let me just apply a little bit more oil on you." It's a bit much. Anyway, I thought it was absolute garbage. There's very few redeemable features. Because a lot of the names, the design choices, all these kind of things have been stolen from Warhammer. Which was then, which Warhammer stole it from 2000 AD. But the name choices, definitely they stole. Like, it's just, this is shit. What an exercise in wasting cash, Netflix. Yeah, garbage. Genuine garbage. Don't watch. Don't watch.